Good morning. Today we will investigate the motion of a charged particle in a parallel plate. The particle will be launched at a speed of 50,000 meters per second. Its charge is that of a proton. However, its mass is slightly heavier. Let's see what happens. Notice the charge is being deflected downwards. That's because it's a positive charge, so it's being attracted to the negative plate here and being repelled by the positive plate there. Specifically today, I'm going to ask you to focus on this speed, velocity in the x direction. Notice the definition of the x direction and the y direction is perpendicular to it. Let's focus only on the velocity in the x direction. I'm going to launch it one more time. Notice the velocity in the x direction does not change. So our goal will be to investigate what formulas I've placed into the code of the simulation to produce this deflection. So a typical problem would look like this. A particle, there's the mass, there's the charge, initially traveling at 50,000 meters per second, enters an electric field of a parallel plate, 10 volts. The plate separation distance is 20 centimeters. Determine the deflection and calculate the exit speed. So we define the x and the y direction, like so. And the question is, why do we even use an x and y? Well, in the x direction, there are no forces. That's very important for you to remember. When there are no forces, that means the acceleration is zero. And that's why previously, we saw that the speed in the x direction, or the velocity in the x direction, did not change. It held steady at 50,000 meters per second. In the y direction, there are forces. So, let's work on the x direction first. We have the initial speed in the x direction, 50,000 meters per second, and we know that's not going to change. We know the distance, 0 0.3 meters from the simulation, and we could use a simple formula, speed equals distance over time. Rearranging that for time, we have that the time is 6 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds. That's the amount of time the charged particle spends moving from this point to that point, dividing these two numbers. Next, we'll look at the y direction. Now, notice in the y direction there is a force. It's the electric force. Technically, there's also a force of gravity but it's so small in comparison to the electric force that it'll be negligible. So we don't even really have to include it. The force points downwards. This charge is positive and it's attracted to the negative plate and repelled by the positive plate. Initially, the speed in the y direction is zero. If we look very carefully at the vector, the velocity vector, notice the vector only points in the x direction. That's very important. All the motion is initially in the x direction. So the initial velocity in the y direction is indeed zero. That's v1. We already know the time spent between the plates. That's 6 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds. And we have our net force statement. F net equals the electric force plus gravity. What's F net equal to? It's always ma. That's Newton's second law. The electric force is given by the charge multiplied by the electric field. And of course, Fg is mg. Now, as a reminder, how do we calculate the electric field strength for a parallel plate? Well, this is the parallel plate, and the white lines represent the electric field. Notice they point downwards. They point from the positive plate to the negative plate. To determine the electric field, we use the voltage, or the potential difference, and we divide it by the distance. The distance in this case was 20 centimeters. And so, when we divide 10 by 0 0.2, we need meters of course, we end up with 50 newtons per coulomb for the electric field strength. And so there's our calculation of the electric force, the charge, 
In this case, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times 50 newtons per coulomb, and that's our value, 8 times 10 to the negative 18 newtons. Substituting that into our equation, we know the mass is given by 2 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. We end up getting the following acceleration. This is the acceleration of the charged particle in the y direction. Because remember, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. There are no forces in the x direction. All right. Remember what our goal was. Our goal was to determine the deflection. We now have three variables, initial speed, time, and acceleration. And we can use one of our kinematic equations. And there's the distance. That's the same distance that the simulation gave us. Next, our second goal or task was to determine the exit speed. At what speed is this particle exiting the parallel plates? Well, we're going to zoom in on that part of the path and notice when it exits, it's exiting along the yellow vector I've drawn. Again, we're going to break that up into an X and a Y direction. In the X direction, we already know the speed. That's 50,000 meters per second. We know that because it doesn't change. So really our challenge here is to get the speed or the velocity in the Y direction. Well, to do that, we're going to use a classic formula. Acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. We know the initial velocity is zero in the y direction. We know the time. And we also know our acceleration. So rearranging the formula, we end up getting 24,000 meters per second. And completing the Pythagorean theorem, we end up getting an exit velocity or exit speed of 55,000 meters per second.